Hi there, it's Graham here from monumentphotos.co.uk We're here in the west coast of Scotland, a little place called Port and Cross uh, for a photo shoot with the lovely Caitlin Caitlin, say hi to the camera Hi Okay, I've worked with Caitlin many times before but I've got to try a really elegant photo shoot She's got a lovely prom dress on and uh, two reasons for making this short video Number one, just to let you see behind the scenes of a typical uh, monument photos photo shoot but also secondly, if there's any up and coming photographers there wanting to learn a bit about photography will hopefully give you some tips, uh, especially on flash photography this evening. So we'll unpack the gear and we'll get started. Okay, before we actually start the photo shoot properly, let me show you uh, one of the problems that you have in photography and it's to do with exposing for the model, but also the ambient light in the background. So I'm going to take a test shot, first of all to expose for Caitlin and we'll see what the results are. Okay, in this one here, uh, Caitlin's perfectly exposed but the background's far too white blown out. So I'm now going to expose for the background. Background's now pretty perfect. The problem we've got though is Caitlin is now a silhouette. Okay, so that's why photographers uh, use flash to compensate for this problem. So we're going to get the flash units out and we'll do things properly. Right, so we're quite excited to be testing out some new gear here, the Profoto B1. We've got two studio heads with us here, location heads, and uh, one of the great things about these is they're going to overcome the problem uh, with overpowering the sun, which you uh, quite often face. Whenever you're doing photography, you want a nice depth of field, especially when you're photographing people, uh, just to separate them from the background. And the problem you've commonly got is with uh, limitations of 1 250th of a second. Uh, you don't have the opportunity to have a a really wide aperture like an f1.4 or 2.8 so the pro photo b1 this is quite a new invention here and we can go as fast as 1 8 thousandth of a second uh, we've got two heads here basically with your standard uh, flash units like the one i've got here uh, your speed lights that typically sit off camera flash or on your hot shoe these particular lights are 10 times the power of one of these okay so having the two of them here we're kicking off with 20 times the power uh, and we should be able to get some really nice effects with it so Let's try them out. Right, so that's all set up, ready to shoot here. Um, I'm using the Nikon D4S. Uh, quite often if you're using portrait photography, rather than a 24 to 70, which is using my workhorse lens, a uh, 70 to 200 actually gives really good results. Uh, it kind of flatters the subject. So we're usually shooting around about 100 ISO. If you can get down to that, that's pretty good. I'm actually going to shoot at 200 ISO. White balance, uh, rather than have it in auto, when you're using any studio strobes, it's better to use daylight. So let's have a little shot and see what we're getting here. Okay, Caitlin, give us a couple of poses and we'll uh, start snapping away here. Two, one. Okay, so you see the effect we're getting here. Just separating Caitlin from the background. We've got two of the strobes on her. The main light we're using there is the kind of pro photo. It's the beauty dish, two feet beauty dish with the kind of white inside. And then across there, Chris is holding second light which is really great, creating a wee kind of backlight for her um, and that's the pro photo zoom ring Okay, we've got a little change of location here we're going to try uh, with a wide angle lens this time to capture some of the, the majestic scenery here uh, For those of you that are quite new to photography uh, the best times for taking photographs for landscapes are one hour after sunrise and one hour before sunset, we call it the golden hours So uh, let's uh, shoot away and get some results Okay, Caitlin One bit of dog here, but it's a nice looking dog. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Okay, right, that's absolutely epic. Okay, one way of controlling uh, how dark the background is, the ambient light, is just by simply making the shutter speed faster. Okay, I'm going to take a shot here, just for talking sake, let's take this one at 800, 2.8. And then we're going to fire one down to 2,000 per second. And you'll see the difference in the kind of shots. I don't know if you can see that on the, the viewfinder there. There's the one taken at 1 800. And you've got the other one taken here at 2,000. And you'll see the kind of difference in the kind of background there. Yeah, classic schoolboy error. Take the lens cap off. Okay, so we'll shoot with the 24 to 70 now. OK, 
Okay, so for this one here, um, Josh is going to hit just from a 45 degree angle, which is usually the best when you're using a, a beauty dish. Um, just gives a nice even flow of light from that one. And again, Chris will just light her up from the back with the, the orange gel, so. Okay, Caitlin, looking good. Three, two, one. Okay, so that should pretty much uh, wrap up this photo shoot here at Port and Cross. I hope you've enjoyed it. I am um, pro photo kit, as I say, the first out and was hugely impressed with. I am um, not once did it miss a single fire uh, with the remotes uh, from the two off-camera flashes, uh, which is pretty impressive. So, uh, Caitlin, she's been a superstar. Um, if you want to check out more of uh, monumentphotos.co.uk, you can find that on our Facebook page. Thanks, and uh, keep an eye for more videos. Thank you.